Well, first of all, let's address this last question. Is there any hope for my almost 16? Absolutely. We work with teens, we work with adults, and they absolutely can reach their potential. Is it a little more difficult with older individuals? Of course, they're more conditioned, they're more defensive, they're more avoidant. But my first recommendation here is to find somebody that you can work with because it sounds like you're almost on your own island here trying to figure out ways to not only help your son, but you're also feeling really defeated and struggling. So you need to be working with two different types of people in my mind right now. One is somebody that can really work with you with your son to be able to understand the selective mutism and frankly overcome it. There's absolute hope. But if you're doing this on your own, that's really going to be difficult. And I can't give you that. Uh, the the prognosis there, if you're not being guided by somebody that's an expert in this area, especially working with teenagers. So you definitely need to find somebody you can work with to help you to help your son. Also, it sounds like you're also going through a lot of struggles, having a therapist or someone you can work with to help you with your own internal struggles. That'll give you a way to be strong. It's similar to when you're on an airplane and you have to have, and the pilot talks about having the oxygen on you before you can help everyone next to you, you need your own source of support and help. And from your question, I'm wondering if you're somewhat of a lone ranger and really going through this on your own. And you're also mentioning your son's depression. So in addition to the selective mutism, we definitely need to help your son in terms of depression, but I can understand how defeating this feels. The other aspect to this question is when you're working with somebody, they can really help you in terms of guiding you for appropriate school-based accommodations and interventions. But what you're struggling with here is that your school's seeing this as a defiance. So it almost means, it doesn't even mean anything right now in terms of accommodations and interventions. We're not even there yet because they're seeing this all wrong. If this is a public school and, and any school in general, you have the right to have accommodations and interventions. You have the right to free and appropriate education. I will say with private schools, you're much more limited in terms of what they're able or willing to do. But in a public school, they need to provide accommodations and interventions. However, this school needs an education. So either one of two things is going on with this school. One, there's a consultant that they're working with that sees SM from a defiant standpoint. And that's who's guiding them in this diagnosis and dealing with your son. Or two, they don't have anybody guiding them. And this is just their preconceived notion of what SM is, that this child, your child, is choosing and refusing to speak, which comes across as defiance. And what ha what's happening is your son is feeling that sense of kind of disappointment from them and most likely picking up because many of our kids with SM are very, very highly sensitive and perceptive and aware. So that kind of feedback they're getting from the school staff is not a good feedback. It's not positive. It's not upbeat. It's, it's more of like, you're doing this on purpose. You're bad. You're, you know, creating, you're a problem. And that's how he's feeling. So of course it's leading to in the place he spends most of his time in school, he's becoming depressed. So to sum up the answers to this, you need to be finding somebody to work with that can guide you. An expert in this field can help you to educate the school properly. A really easy thing for you to do right now is go on selectedmutismcenter.org, our resource section. We have so many resources of what SM is and what SM isn't. And share with them in an objective fashion what SM is, that SM is a social communication anxiety disorder and that there are factors into why somebody develops this and why it's maintained. But in addition, there are stages of social communication that an individual functions and verbal is just one stage. And you need to objectively give them that. And if you've already done that, also selectedmutism.org, um, the nonprofit organization, has a ton of resources for professionals, for teachers, for parents to really share those resources, again, objectively. It's not you coming to them and saying, this is what you need to do for my son. This is an objective way of giving them materials, scheduling a meeting, going through it. If you're still struggling, again, the expert you work with to help you should be able to guide you through this in terms of scheduling a meeting, talking with your school, educating them. Often schools just don't know. Unfortunately, the term SM is lousy and they focus on speaking and not speaking. And that old preconceived idea of children are choosing and refusing this, 
that's still there for individuals that don't understand this. They still see it that way. And it's sad, but working with somebody that can guide you almost your lifeline, that's really the first thing. I mean, that's all we do every day is we work with families, work with schools. And I suggest you find someone to work with to help guide you. You may as a in addition, you may need to work with an advocate that helps you, but I can't emphasize enough the importance of working with someone with knowledge in this area, but also to help your son build those coping skills to be able to really use skills, develop skills to progress communicatively so that your son is able to communicate verbally, but also develop school-based accommodations and interventions so that they can do their schoolwork and function in school in an upbeat, positive manner. Mm-hmm.